Let the old Nawbone challenge begin. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another challenge week video today we are kicking off what is a very special week because this is our first build around challenge now normally what we do is we set a challenge to you guys within a specific format and ask you to build a deck that focuses very heavily on that challenge but we're trying to figure out a different formula for it and this week what we decided to do is provide to you all a build around card that you can build a deck with whatever strategy you would like to implore whether it be really built around that card or a theme of that card or something like that or if you just wanted to see what you can do with the specific card in some other strategy we basically put it to you guys and what we are doing is basing the points off of wins and deck creativity now that creativity one is a little bit subjective i know but we do have an amazing mod who helps me judge these decks and give a ranking between one and five, five being the most creative. Now, what we're gonna do is take that creative score and take the number of wins, add them together, and you get your final score very straightforward. And hopefully we will see some amazing decks this week. Now we've already got quite a number of submissions, of course. If you would like to be a part of those submissions, you can certainly do so. All you gotta do is go over to our Discord, link is down in the description, and check out that channel submissions uh, channel that is where we're going to submit all of these decks and we do look forward to seeing what you can come up with now the winner of course each week is going to get a free mystery proxy pack filled with five proxies that are normally only available to our patreon community so one if you would like to subscribe and support the channel that would be a hum humongous help but two if you would like to get some of these without having to go through all of that this is the best way to do it so without further ado guys let's jump into today's deck and here it is submitted by the amazing Spinaraptor, who has won quite a number of these challenge weeks, actually. And this is very much a reanimator style list. Now, before we jump into this, I am going to go ahead and tell you, Spinaraptor, you got, between Alex and myself, a rating of four. Because you did actually not just create a reanimator list here, but you really get to capitalize on Old Gnawbone's ability with the um, extra treasure to tokens that you do get. Uh, so, let's talk through this very, very briefly. The idea is to use Unburial Rites or return upon the tide. And what that allows you to do is pull a creature from the graveyard and throw it onto the battlefield. Now we've got quite a number of good selections. Of course, Shieldred, Craterhoof, even Corvold is here, but truth be told, we really want to get old Knobbone down so we can start dealing damage to the opponent create a ton of treasure tokens and then all these other reanimator targets that may or may not have gotten stranded in our hand are then playable because we just have tons of treasure tokens that we can spit them out with and do some really crazy stuff now we do have seize the spoils in here as an option if we would like to discard a card from our hand that would uh ideally be one of these reanimator targets and then we can kind of pull it back with one of these two cards this also does create a treasure token for us and draws us a couple cards as well now i did mention that uh we have a little bit more than just a reanimator package here and that is very much uh thanks to kalian Kali kalane Reclusive Painter, this card uh, from uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. When it enters the battlefield, you create a treasure token, but other creatures you control that enter the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one -one counter on them for each mana from a treasure that was spent to cast it. Now, what that allows us to do is anything that we play off of the amazing number of treasures that we can get with Old Knobbone or really any of our creatures, uh, we get to throw out onto some of these other creatures here. Now, Corvold, on top of everything else, uh, whenever you sacrifice a permanent, you put a 1-1 card on Corvold and draw a card. If we're sacrificing treasure tokens to play things that then get 1-1 counters on them, we also get to draw however many treasure tokens we sacrificed and put that many 1-1 counters on Corvold. Pretty creative in my opinion. So Spinaraptor, fantastic job, my friend. A lot of the rest of the deck, we do have Shambling Ghast here. It's just a nice little one drop. It creates a treasure token as well when it dies, uh, or we can kind of use it to take out some early game threats. Stitcher Supplier fills up the graveyard force as well as Grizzly Salvage, and then Deadly Dispute just gives us a way to draw a couple cards into our deck, and then of course create those treasure tokens as well. The best sacrifice uh, outlets, of course, being Shambling Ghast and Stitcher Supplier. So 
So a very, very creative deck spinner after. I want to thank you again for what is a really, really exciting one. Can't wait to jump into this one. We're going to go through three games. We're going to see how many wins we can get the maximum number of points, my friend. We're looking at seven. Let's see if we can do it with this amazing list. And here we are for game number one. And yeah, I mean, this is a pretty easy keep. We do need some red mana, but the Grizzly Salvage should theoretically help us get there and we can very easily play it on turn two. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this. The Seize the Spoil is also gonna be quite nice for us because it's gonna allow us to either discard the Unburial Rites or the old Knob Bone. Crucially, we don't have white mana in the deck. The way we do this is with the, uh, the treasure tokens that we get off of the other cards that we've got here. So. Just some things to keep in mind. Uh, I think we do just go for the red mana here. Kind of just want to make sure that we're hitting our land drops, moving the game forward. We can use the Seize the Spoils to uh, get old Gnawbone here into the graveyard. And I think that will probably be the play here. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably the safest. We get to draw a couple cards. That also gives us that treasure token. And then next turn, we can actually just get old Gnawbone out here thanks to this uh, very, very nice uh, Seize the Spoils there. So the opponent is going to go ahead and foretell a card, fully expecting quite a lot of removal from them this game. Uh, that would not be surprising at all, but we are going to just go for it here. They're down to one mana available, so I feel fairly confident. But again, if they've got removal, we are in bad shape here. So let's see what we can do. Worst case scenario, I suppose we do have some other backup threats here. Um, and hopefully we can actually get, uh, get something else out with this Unburial Rites at some point. But we will see. Spinner Raptor, I love a good reanimator strategy. That is why, by the way, I picked yours first, because I just absolutely love reanimator. So thank you so much for submitting what is truly a very, very fun little list. Um, I'm very excited, and I really do like this format where we provide you all with a build around card that you can kind of play off of and do some really creative things. And I think that this works fairly well. So uh, I think what we're going to probably do is continue this style of deck, uh, if I had to guess. Um, and hopefully have a really good time doing it. So let's see what we want to do first. Um, let's Grizzly Salvage really quickly. Let's see what we can get. Uh, not a lot, to be honest. Um, I guess we just do this. Uh, let's do... Oh, the opponent gave up. All right, uh, Spinner Raptor, that's a win, my friend. We got the first one. Let's go ahead and jump into game two, and we'll see if we can get another win with this one. And here we are, guys, for game number two. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is another easy keep, in my opinion. Uh, we don't have quite, maybe quite as strong a hand as we had the, the previous round, but we do have a nice little one drop here. We can foretell this return upon the tide, so that is going to give us some options later in the game as well. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. Um, opponent being very nice and giving us a nice little hello there. I like it. Uh, let's go ahead and attack in first. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and foretell this. And see what we can do. We do have the four mana here. So truthfully, what we need is just some discard outlets. Uh, not super worried about what the opponent's doing. This is very much a uh, an all-in kind of list here, of course. So let's uh, let's go for a bit of deck thinning here. We're also going to go ahead and foretell this. Um, we'll just get a nice, a nice little attack in here. Um, does it really matter what land we get, if I'm honest? Um, I guess we'll just go ahead and get a forest. We've got the one red. That's all we really need, uh, because Seize the Spoil or Corvold are really the two big red cards in the deck. So, um, assuming we can get those down, it's not really a big problem. Um, there's a Stitcher Supplier. I think first things first, let's, let's get an attack in. Let's see if they actually, I mean, chances are they're not going for a block, but... Uh, let's just see. This could be very, very key. We get something good. We did not get something good. That is very, fairly unfortunate uh, because now we really don't have much we can do. Unfortunately, we're not getting very far into uh, into the deck here with anything too crazy to reanimate. So I think the play is just going to be to uh, offer up this, this trade here. I'm going to leave the Shambling Ghast up. <clears throat> um, this is just a really nice blocker for us. Eventually, we can just play the old Nawbone. The opponent's really not doing too much. It looks like they missed a land drop, potentially. Um, but we will uh, we'll see what we want to do here. They just have another speaker. It's not going to do it. Uh, if they kill this, we do get to kill a speaker. So again, that's a nice little thing. One, two, three, four, five. Or we can take the treasure and get ourselves to old Nawbone just to turn quicker. There's an Unburial Rites. Again, not very helpful. Uh, let's go ahead and attack with the Stitcher Supplier here. 
uh if they do decide to block that just fills our graveyard and makes it so much easier for us to kind of take over so i'm all good with it uh but it looks like they're not going to do it so we'll see what we can do <laughs> they're gonna banishing light the shambling ghast makes sense uh that is a very efficient way to kind of get rid of that threat um there's a Corvold though which is honestly really helpful right now so let's get Corvold down uh let's sacrifice this it's going to fill up our yard, hopefully a little bit, not a ton here. Um, we'll go ahead and play this tapped and then pass. This is a very nice pull because we could just exactly play it, uh, which is really crucial. And here, obviously, we can start dealing a little bit more damage now. Uh, and I think, truthfully, we just go ahead and play old Nawbone here. Um, we're going to attack in. I will happily sacrifice a forest here that's going to draw us a card, um, get us a little bit more damage in as well, and then that way, if we'd like, I mean, truth be told, we could just start pulling some of these things out here. I'm going to go ahead and unburial rights one of these little guys here. Uh, this doesn't seem all that great, I understand, but what this does is provide us with not only another way to fill the graveyard with Corvold next turn, um, but it also powers up Corvold pretty quickly and gives us a little bit more in the graveyard theoretically. So uh, yeah, I think that's pretty solid. Um, I mean, Spinner after it, it is looking pretty good. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, we do have a deadly dispute as well. Uh, so I'm going to do this and just block these two here. It looks like they're just kind of maybe resounding to the loss here, but we'll see. Uh, that gives us three more in the graveyard, which is great. Um, ah, interesting, interesting, interesting. This doesn't solve their problem, though, which is kind of nice. Uh, I am going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to sacrifice the old Nawbone. Uh, this gives us three more cards to draw and puts an old Nawbone in the graveyard. Uh, and there we go. Excuse me, five cards total, I suppose. And then here, I mean, we... We can just Crater Hoof Behemoth, uh, which is really good. Uh, or we can Old Gnawbone. We can't do both. That's the only trick here. Um, yeah, I'm going to Old Gnawbone. This is an Old Gnawbone build. We do want to make sure we're doing the best we can here. Uh, and I'll go ahead and get rid of the other. We could have gotten rid of Shieldred, but we actually don't need to. We're kind of in a position now where we just Crater Hoof and hopefully get there. Um, and if we don't, we don't. But... It's really going to shut down a lot of what they're trying to do here. So uh, let's do this. It's going to fill up the graveyard just a little bit further. Perfect. Uh, let's then do this. That's going to power everything up a little bit here. Um, very nice. And I mean, it doesn't really matter. I guess we just do this. We attack with both. Obviously, this is a must block for them. Uh, but that is going to give us some treasure tokens, which is great. Uh, I guess we could have attacked with everything, and that would have been better, but oh well. All right, let's get Shieldra down. Um, and truthfully, we could have gotten, I guess, Corvold down first here, but I think it's safe to say we might just win. Um, even in a situation where this doesn't work... Uh, I'll go ahead and sacrifice one of these. We still got another old Nawbone in in the hand here, and more unburial rights plus return. So, not really worried. Um, sure, that's totally fine. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. We do have to worry a little bit about self mill here, but I think uh, I think we'll be just fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am not playing this perfectly, by the way, Spinner Raptor. I know, so I do apologize, but I think we, uh, I think we'll be okay. Let's get the Woodland Cemetery down first. Um, I'm gonna play you. I'm gonna play. Oh, I wish we could do both. Um, I'm gonna play you. I don't think we can do both. No, not quite. Um. I'm actually not going to Grizzly Salvage. I don't want to just lose out here, so I don't think that that's worth it. They had two Cleansing Novas so far. Very interesting little uh, mono white list. I mean, it's very stock, I would imagine, but um, I think we can take this, uh, this person down here this coming turn. Very good card, but not going to be good enough. Uh, yep. Yep. 
so that is a lot of uh, life gain for him. But is it going to be enough? And I don't, I, truthfully, I just don't think it is. Um, we want to play every creature we can and then play Crater Hoof. So that's kind of the goal here. They are going to gain some life, but I think we'll, we'll more than make up for that. Um, fortunately, we don't have any extra treasure at the moment. So I think we just have to go for it. Uh, whoops, not you, not you. Let's go for the Crater Hoof. They're going to gain a life, of course, um, but that is going to buff us up quite a bit. Uh, and I'm just going to go for the full attack here. We do all of these have tramples, so just some things to keep in mind here. They can kill off the, the painter naturally, but they're going to have to do a lot to try and save themselves here. Um, the trample off of the crater hoof works so well, by the way, with old Nawbone. It's just phenomenal. Um, yep. They're down so close to death here. Um, all right, so we've got a lot of treasure tokens once again, uh, and we can on burial rights, but we're gonna wait. We're gonna guarantee that we can do this because next turn, if they do for some reason, okay, they can't, so we got it. We have got it, yes. And we are just gonna go ahead and attack in here. Spinner after we did it. That's a second game win. That's pretty ins and insane, in my opinion. I can't believe we did it. Let's see if we can do one final one and get that perfect record of seven. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Let's see what we can do. And here we are, guys, for our third and final game. Uh, and yes, this is a reasonable keep. We've got a nice little uh, play here, in my opinion. So we are going to go ahead and try this one out. We're going to lead off with that Stitcher Supplier. Just get that down as early as we can. Turn two, it might just be foretelling here, depending on what we draw. But we'll see as we go through. Uh, so far, Spinner After, I... I mean, a near perfect record so far. We we didn't get quite the f the full five on the creativity, but we did get a nice four, and we've gotten two wins so far. One more, and we have got a seven, which is highly highly difficult to beat. Uh, there are a few decks that can do it, or at least tie with it, though. So something to keep in mind: if people do 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 tie uh, during this uh, this challenge week. We're going to give away all of the prizes to everybody. Uh, so just a quick heads up there. We want to make sure that everybody is having a really nice chance at uh, some awesome stuff here. Um, I mean, we just go ahead and Grizzly Salvage, I think. There's not really a big reason not to. We'll take that Woodland Cemetery. That's going to fill up our graveyard with the Unburial Rites, which is good. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll see what the opponent's got. Not every day you see a barrier of bones, so I'm curious to see what this is. I'm assuming the only reason they have it in there is for the surveil mechanic, so I'm assuming that this is going to be a fairly heavy surveil kind of list, but uh, truth be told, I don't... that doesn't scare me that much. Uh, we'll see, though. It, it very well could be a really bad uh, omen here, so we will see. Let's grind to the bottom, okay? Interesting. Um... All right, uh, well, I mean, I think it's pretty clear. The play is just going to be Blood Crypt tapped, Fortell, and uh, that's it. I mean, pretty slow start, not going to lie, but we do have quite a bit going for us at this point. Uh, the trick is we don't have a lot in the yard that we'd like to, to bring back, um, so that is going to be a bit of a problem for us. Opponent then playing an Innkeeper. Uh, very curious, very, very curious indeed. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and play the Cemetery. I mean, I don't particularly just want to throw it out there with the, the shambling ghast. Um, that doesn't seem great. So I'm just going to wait. I mean, there's not... I, I think this is a situation, and, and Spinner Raptor, I think this is the... If I had to have any criticism of the deck, and keep in mind I am searching at this point, um, it's that sometimes, because we are slightly lighter on the end of... Uh, on particular, like, bombs... It does take a little bit to get going occasionally. Now, that being said, obviously, that's not a huge problem. It's just something to uh, to think about here. Uh, happily going to sacrifice the Stitcher Supplier. That's going to fill up the yard a little bit more. Corvold does provide us with a way to kind of get around that because it's only five mana. It isn't that bad of a, a mana cost for us. Um, this kills us, am I correct? Yep. So they just win. Wow, how unfortunate. Uh, technically, that's it, though. Um, that's a game loss for a Spinner Raptor, which does put our final record at six. I can't believe it. 
I'm gonna let him finish it because this is very satisfying for them. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> what a fun little combo. Um, can't be too upset, right? Like they just got it. That's all it is. Uh, there wasn't a lot of interaction in this list, so that is another thing that I was gonna mention. But let's go ahead, Spinner After. Let's talk about your deck and what a strong record we are starting with. Okay, so final score. We are looking at a six in total. Now keep in mind the maximum score that anybody can get is if you get a perfect five in creativity and a perfect three games, you are looking at an eight. So that's a pretty strong start, uh, six is. So I'm actually really stoked about that. Spinner after again, you you know, you, you pulled on my heartstrings with the reanimator list. I always love a good reanimator list. So we had to start there. A greatly creative list. It took reanimator to a different level with the treasure tokens, really put it over the top and utilized not only old Nawbone to build those treasure tokens, but then the treasure tokens themselves to build back into the list. Uh, so congratulations there, my friend. A hugely, hugely successful uh, list in my opinion. Again, the only criticisms I would have if I had to pick any, <clears throat> and again, I am picking or nitpicking at this point, Shambling, uh, whatever it is, that was like really the only major interaction that we had, uh, and it wasn't really that major. Um, and it was really there for the treasure tokens, so I understand this is much more kind of a combo-y list. Reanimator is usually a less interactive deck, so it makes sense that there's not a lot of that in there, but it did make it difficult to deal with opponent's stuff. Thankfully, this is a deck that goes over the top. That's not a big problem. So again, not trying to criticize by any means. The only other thing I would say is exactly as we talked about in that third game, we just didn't have that many reanimator targets early on. Um, that being said, you very cleverly put Corvold in the list, which is a nice five mana, just mid range threat that really can take over a game on its own. So. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that more as criticisms and more of just things to look out for maybe, but overall, Spinner Raptor, fantastic start, my friend. Thank you guys so much. Please make sure you share your challenge submissions to us in our Discord. If you would like to do that, again, that challenge submissions channel is open for you. But guys, thank you so much. I hope you're having a great week. Let's, uh, let's have some fun this week, and I will see you very soon for some more gameplay videos.